Learning medicine is hard work. Osmosis makes it easy. It takes your lectures and notes to create a personalized study plan with exclusive videos, practice questions, and flashcards, and so much more. Try it free today. Neisseria gonorrhea, also known as N. gonorrhea to its friends, is a gram-negative oval bacterium that infects humans, causing a number of infections including gonorrhea. The word Neisseria comes from Neiser Albert, a German physician who discovered it, while gonorrhea is from the Greek words gonos, which means seed, and rho, which means flow, meaning flow of seed, an illustration referring to the penile purulent discharge which was mistakenly thought to be semen in infected males. Now a little bit of microbe anatomy and physiology. N. gonorrhea is a gram-negative bacterium. Because its cell wall has a thin peptidoglycan layer and so it doesn't retain purple dye used during gram staining. Instead, like any other gram-negative bacteria, N. gonorrhea stains pink with saffron and dye. N. gonorrhea typically live in pairs called diplococci, stacked side to side so the pair looks like a coffee bean. They're also non-modal, non-spore forming, and obligate aerobes, which means that they absolutely need oxygen to grow. Finally, they're catalase and oxidase positive, which means that they produce both of these enzymes. N. gonorrhea grows on a special chocolate medium called Thayer Martin Auger, which mainly consists of sheep blood. Mm, yum. Some antimicrobials, like vancomycin and nystatin, are usually added to the Thayer Martin auger to inhibit the possible growth of undesired bacteria or fungi, and maximize the growth of Neisseria species. However, other Neisseria species, like N. meningitidis, have the same properties, so the maltose fermentation test is done to differentiate the two. The gist of it is that the N. gonorrhea can't ferment maltose, whereas N. meningitidis can. To check for this, a pure sample from the culture of the suspected bacteria is transferred to a sterile tube containing phenol red maltose broth, which is then incubated at 36 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. Since N. gonorrhea can't ferment maltose, the solution stays red, whereas with N. meningitidis, fermentation byproducts make the solution go yellow. Now, unlike its sister, Neisseria meningitidis, Neisseria gonorrhea is not an encapsulated bacteria so it does not have a polysaccharide capsule. But this bacteria has a ton of other virulence factors, which it uses to attack and destroy host cells, and also to evade the immune system. First, N. gonorrhea has pili, these little thread-like extensions radiating from the bacterial surface. The pili help N. gonorrhea attach to a host mucosa surface. Also, they help bacteria get physically connected with each other, making what's known as a conjugation pilus which is a hollow tiny rod through which bacteria can swap genetic information back and forth, including antibiotic resistance genes. Interestingly, N. gonorrhea pili are made of antigenic proteins which can vary with every infection, what's known as phase variation. Alright, so normally when a certain bacteria causes an infection, the immune system keeps memory of the bacterial antigen's configuration. So if the same bacteria infects again, the immune system remembers it and quickly makes specific antibodies against it. However, since N. gonorrhea changes the antigens on its pili each time it infects a host, the immune system cannot produce a quick specific immune response. Phase variation is also the reason why there's no effective vaccine against N. gonorrhea. Pili aside, other virulence factors of N. gonorrhea include toxins. The very important one is IgA protease a toxic protein that this bacterium uses to destroy immunoglobulin A, or IgA. IgA is an immune system protein that's normally found in the mucosa secretions, like those produced by the vagina or the cervix. IgA helps with bacteria opsonization, meaning it takes the bacteria so that neutrophils can recognize and destroy them. So IgA protease neutralizes the first line of mucosal defense. However, not all IgA molecules get neutralized. So some N. gonorrhea bacteria are still opsonized and end up getting attacked by neutrophils. Inside the neutrophil, N. gonorrhea is wrapped in a phagosome, a bubble inside which reactive oxygen species, like hydrogen peroxide, are released to kill it. However, N. gonorrhea releases catalase, which breaks down hydrogen peroxide. Unfortunately, this translates as a win for N. gonorrhea, which now takes over the neutrophil and uses its energetic resources to multiply. The neutrophil eventually becomes too full and bursts open, 
letting out a ton of bacteria in the bloodstream, which is known as gonococcemia. Inside the blood, N. gonorrhea can use other virulence factors. First, there's a cell wall antigen called lipooligosaccharide, or LOS, which is known for its ability to trigger a widespread immune reaction that results in sepsis, meaning blood vessels dilate, so blood pressure drops, and vital organs don't get enough blood. And one final virulence factor of N. gonorrhea is its ability to do sialylation, a process by which N. gonorrhea wraps its LOS cell wall with sialic acid the same molecule initially found in the host cells. This helps the bacteria to hide its LOS antigen, making itself anonymous to the host defense mechanism, like camouflage. As if it wasn't enough, N. gonorrhea can spread from the bloodstream to other parts of the body, like the joints or the heart. Most frequently though, N. gonorrhea causes gonorrhea, which is a sexually transmitted infection. In males, gonorrhea manifests as urethritis, or inflammation of the urethra, but it can also affect the prostate, causing prostatitis, or the epididymis, causing epididymitis. In females, N. gonorrhea can also cause urethritis, but most frequently it causes vaginitis and cervicitis, so the inflammation of the vagina and cervix, respectively. Through the cervix, N. gonorrhea can spread to the uterus, the fallopian tubes, and sometimes even the ovaries, causing pelvic inflammatory disease, or PID. Finally, PID can cause a complication called Fitz-Hugh-Curtis syndrome, which happens when the inflammation spreads to the peritoneum, and from there to Glisson's capsule, which surrounds the liver. This results in violin string adhesions, or thin strings of scar tissue that attach the liver to the peritoneum. If N. gonorrhea infects pregnant women, it can spread to the baby during vaginal delivery, and result in early neonatal conjunctivitis so a type of conjunctivitis that affects the newborn two to five days after birth. And gonorrhea can also cause some rare but serious infections, often as a consequence of gonococcemia. When the infection spreads to the joints, it might cause gonococcal arthritis, which is more common in sexually active adolescents. If it spreads to the heart, it might affect the heart valves, causing endocarditis. The first symptoms of Neisseria gonorrhea infection are related to the genital infection, in men, there can be a burning sensation when urinating, as well as clear urethral discharge, which can become purulent and bloody. In women, there's usually thick, white, purulent vaginal or urethral discharge, which can also turn bloody sometimes. If the infection progresses to PID, there might be lower abdominal pain and fever. Alternatively, with neonatal conjunctivitis, there can be swollen eyelids with mucus and pus discharges from the eye. In gonococcal arthritis, there's multiple joint inflammation which results in painful swelling of the wrists, ankles, and elbows. With gonococcal endocarditis, there might be fever, chills, sweating, and malaise. Diagnosis is usually done with a vaginal or urethral swab, which is then smeared on a slide for biochemical tests and gram staining, which reveals pink coffee bean-shaped bacteria within neutrophils. Growing the bacteria on Thayer Martin agar is required for confirmation but nucleic acid amplification testing, or NAT, can also be done, and this consists of identifying the bacterial genetic material. Treatment for N. gonorrhea infections is with third-generation cephalosporins, typically ceftriaxone. However, it has been found that gonococcal infections are frequently associated with a chlamydia trachomatis co-infection, so usually azithromycin or doxycycline are given along with ceftriaxone to also cover chlamydia. Finally, since gonorrhea is a sexually transmitted infection, it can be prevented by using condoms during sex. Alright, as a quick recap. Neisseria gonorrhea is a gram-negative diplococci that grows best on Thayer Martin agar. It's non-modal, non-spore-forming, oxidase-positive, catalase-positive, and maltose-negative. It lacks a capsule, but has other virulence factors like pili, and proteins like PIL-C, OPA, and IgA protease. Most frequently, N. gonorrhea causes gonorrhea, which commonly manifests as urethritis in males and vaginitis and cervicitis in females. Left untreated, N. gonorrhea infections can progress to gonococcemia and cause complications like gonococcal sepsis, septic arthritis, and endocarditis. Treatment is with ceftriaxone, and azithromycin or doxycycline are also given to cover a possible chlamydia co-infection. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in a deeper dive on this topic, 
Take a look at osmosis.org, where we have flashcards, questions, and other awesome tools to help you learn medicine.